welcome to the Empower Hour, guys. I'm your host, Miley Scarpino. I'm here with someone special. Actually, every time somebody comes on, they're special. But this person is my mom. Yay! This is Janet Mathern. Um, yeah, the woman that gave birth to me. The woman that caused this trouble right here. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi. Hi from Houston, Texas. Yeah, she's in Houston, Texas. Um, Aloha, Hawaii. Yeah, well, and everywhere else, because it's not just people in Hawaii that watch. Oh, yeah. Because, um, yeah. But why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background? Okay. I am Janet Mathern. I'm Miley Scarpino's mom, and also yeah. Morgan Mathern's mom. And I'm, I'm a wife to Troy Mathern. And I have lots of background. I, I've flown all over the world as an international flight attendant with Continental Airlines when I was 19 years old. And I went to college before that at Utah State for two years. Mom and is very into like acting. Yes. Oh my, that was, she is was, a thespian every day of her life. Yes, I, instead of, my, my husband now says, oh, you don't act anymore, you just act up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true too. So that's kind of what I do. And um, then I made handbags and, and did some acting here in Houston. Yeah, you made cigar box handbags, box. which took off, yes. and you were in People magazine when I was yes. younger. You were featured in that's People, right. which was really cool. Yes. Um, you started that business up by yourself and did everything by hand, which... All I, by hand. Yeah. Ugh. That was a lot of work that you put into it, which was awesome because it... it shows people if you really want something, it, it is possible. It just takes time and a lot of energy. But that was amazing that you did that. And then you were also Sally Fields photo double. Yes. Hi, Sally. <laughs> yes, I was. And now you're a mom. You're, do you want to say how old you are, mom? Sure. I'm 50 in September. OK. And then you, my mom had. Um, I have two half sisters. So one is Mia, she's 11, and Morgan is nine. And I'm always impressed when I go to visit. I was just there two weeks ago because my mom is in her 50s and she still acts like she's in her 30s or 20s. I mean, she just goes, 20s, goes, goes. 20s. 20s. Um, Cause my little sisters are really active. They're really busy every day and you somehow keep up with them. Um, how do you do that? Well, first of all, with exercise and nutrition, which has always been really important to me, and and um, through nutrition, it gives me the energy. When I don't eat correctly, I have no energy, and then I feel bad. And I find that when I don't exercise, the same thing happens. And from exercising, it makes you want to eat more healthy. So if you do both, it really helps, and it, and it keeps you. Because I actually do that more. I exercise and eat healthy so that I can do my life instead of just looking good which it helps me to look really good and feel good and, and be the size I've always been since I was in high school but also the energy that it's given that it gives me yeah so I've watched you've been in the gym ever since I was little and now you do yes. a lot of yoga yes and why do you like but I but I still lift weights look yeah yeah I think are my biceps bigger now did they get bigger I Let's think see. I beat you Oh, oh darn it. Oh well. <laughs> um, so yeah, why do you like yoga? Because that's something that you've been doing and you do the 40 days of yoga every year, which is really neat as well. Yes, and I, I have that book here that I'd like to share with the viewers. This is what started it all, a 40 days yoga challenge that we had at our health club. And Baron Baptiste is uh, the writer of this book and Akeem Fashbigger, he's the one that brought it. Mom, well, kind of hold it still so we can see it because there's a little bit oh, of a I'm glare. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Okay. Perfect. Yes, and for 40 days, if you get this book, it will change your life and it will really help you in yoga. It's very simple poses. Why? Why will it change your life? Because it, it actually takes time. You know, you can read it and reread it and do it on your own and do it at home. You can do it in a hotel room. You can do it anywhere you are. And it's just simple. And it talks about all aspects of yoga. And it actually informs you about each pose, like, represents something. Like, if you're having a lot of tightness in your hips, then you're, you're holding a lot of your emotions because that's the chakra where you have your emotions. And 
And it, it explains all that in this book. So I highly recommend that book. For 40 days, from, and so that was from your 40 days of yoga, where that came from? Yes, yes. This was the very first one that we did. And what we did that was really neat was a three-day juice fast, which I have never done. And that really taught me a lot about nutrition. And just like what once my body was clean after the three days, I didn't want to go and eat a bag of potato chips. I didn't want to, you know, my body was so clean. I felt so good that, that when I did, and even people started to smell kind of, funny because it was like you're you're so clean with what what you're eating that you just feel so good and it just I think everybody should do it it's fast like at least once a year do you I don't know how politically correct that is to say people started smelling funny mom well not smelling funny but you know you can smell different people do you smell. mean people that possibly were eating fried food you could smell or like things no no it's just different your 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 senses are so heightened when you're like you when you're like eating so clean like that like you just feel like you just feel more aware I guess it's more awareness I, I, I guess probably people just always smell like that but you just don't smell them because you're not aware because you're not you know but you're not even hungry and you just feel so good if you follow this so tell me what like a typical day was for your juice cleanse, because I, I don't know how I feel about juice cleanses. I'm just, okay, I'm kinda uh, like, it's, o Ugh. it's only three days, and Kat Axman, who is like a, an unbelievable uh, yoga teacher also, she gave us the whole three-day plan, and we all bought juicers, and that's another thing about juicers. You should just get, uh, <laughs> I hear my husband laughing, but you know what, there's... <laughs> There's lots of different juicers out there. And you know what? Costco has a really good one, and it's called um, Jacqueline. And it's only $89. It's not $500. And it, it's just as good, and it works amazing. Because my dad has, it, my dad's like into juicing too, and he I had know. a raw press, and whoo, that thing was expensive. You don't need something yeah. like that. Well, if you can afford it and you want to do it, then I understand. But for, for the majority of us, just a regular old $89 juicer, dollar juicer will like do it, you fine. know? Yes, and she gave us a little recipe, like you'd have like a, an inch of, uh, I don't have it here with me. If I would have known you were going to ask me about it, I would have pulled those recipes. But it's, it's all recipes, and if any of the viewers want that three-day juice fast, I can get it for you to pass on to any of them. But do you remember what, like, was it mostly veggies, or were there, like, fruits involved? Yes. Or yes. was it more fruits in the morning? Very, and, uh -huh, and then very, it goes little, very little fruit, like green apple, like a half of a green apple, a cucumber, and spearmint, something like that. And then it, it, there was only three of them and they were only about that big. So, but what was so funny is you had to um, take all the fiber off, like if there was anything left, because with a cheaper juicer, you don't get it as refined or pressed as, as good as one of the expensive ones like your daddy has. And so you'd have to take a lot of the, you know, the sediment and stuff that comes to the top off because that's what makes you hungry. Is, is that your body, that's what Do you know why? Because to me, that doesn't make no. any sense. Because fiber no, is a I filling don't know factor. Why, we can have Kat. I'll have to do like some research texture. on that. I have two things yeah. to do now. Research why that is and research why? how to be a vegan bodybuilder. Because I still can't figure that out, how people do that. So anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then tell us about being a mom and juggling your schedule. Like, how do you do that? What is your... What, because I don't even really know how you do that. Uh-oh, we lost you. You're muted. We're going to take a commercial and fix this little mute problem. We'll be back in a few seconds, minutes. Um, I'm Ellie Scarpino. This is the Empower Hour, and I'm here with Jana Mathern. And we'll be back soon. Thanks. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen. I host Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii, and I do this because I care about science literacy in Hawaii. I want to spread the understanding that science is a vital and interesting part of everyone's life. I want to make sure the broadest possible spectrum of people understand the beauty and the value of science and realize that science plays out each and every day of their lives. I want you to understand that science is fun. So we bring on to this show each week guests or scientists, from astronomers to zoologists, and we talk about what they do and how they do it. But most importantly, we talk about why you should care about their work, why you should see 
that their work has value and impact on your life. So I hope you'll join us Fridays, 1 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. You can watch us via live stream. You can watch us uh, recorded on Olelo, and you can see us uh, each week. We hope you'll join us. Welcome back to the Empower Hour, guys. I'm your host, Miley Scarpino. We fixed the problem. My mom's back. You can hear her now. Um, so hi, Mom. Hi. People say we look alike. I don't really think we look alike. I think I look like my dad. But anyways, um, so tell us how you got. You didn't really talk about how you got into. Actually, you look like my sister. OK, that's a whole different thing. How did you get into health and nutrition? When did that start? Well, it started when I was about 20 years old. I met your dad, and your dad was very into bodybuilding yeah. and runs in the family. weightlifting. Yes, and he was very healthy, and I was kind of fat because I was an international flight attendant, and I was eating myself, you know, across the ocean when I'd go on these flights because I would have to fly during the day. I mean, I would have to sleep during the day and fly at night, like to, from Honolulu to Sydney, and oh, it was it was terrible. So my body clock was all confused. And so when I met your dad, I was probably at the biggest I'd ever been, and he's like, well, would you like to start going to the gym? And I started going to the gym with him, and within six to eight weeks, I started seeing definition that I had never seen before, and the the secret was lifting heavy weights. He, lift, he lifted really, really heavy weights, and... When I would talk to people about that, they were always, especially women, they were like, oh, I don't lift heavy weights. I don't want to get bigger. But all, I could, all that happened to me is I just, I continued to get more defined and smaller, which was really good. And so that was like, your dad would come home from a busy day of like a 14 hour surgery and we would go to the gym at eight o'clock at night. So he was very dedicated and, and I, have, I owe a lot of my discipline to him because he taught me everything I know about that part of weightlifting and how to hold the bar correctly. And that was a very, that was a very important part of our marriage that we shared that fitness uh, enthusiasm together. Yeah, and I think dad too, because dad gave me a lot of my good mechanics. And it yeah. goes to show you how one person can really influence a multitude of people's life. Because dad's the same way even when he practices. He really, um, helps people and gives them tips, not just about what they're coming in for, um, but about life in general. So it's important yeah, to share he, your knowledge with other it, people. And he, he does it in an empowering way, not in a shaming way. And, you know, so he makes you feel good about it instead of like, you know, because there was a lot of stuff I didn't know. And he, the way he'd show me, it wasn't like, oh, look, give me that bar. You're not doing that right. He would, why don't you try it this way or, you know, so that's really nice. Right, and he's the same way with me, too. He always is excited to give me new pointers for uh, lifting. You know, if I'm like, oh, I'm getting, my quads are getting too big, he's like, well, go do some box squats. And I'm like, okay. Hello, um, yeah, my name's Josh. Very James. smart. And, you know, I've been doing that exercise now. This one uh, that you showed me while you were here. The lateral I'm raises. Doing, yeah, I'm doing it correctly now. Oh, okay, okay, good. I'm glad. Build those shoulders. Um, so then now let's talk about being a mom. How do you stay motivated? Okay. How do you wake up and go to the gym? Because you wake up, put the girls on the bus, make their lunches, like you go, 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 go all day long. How do you fit in going to the gym and staying active? Because a lot of people have that problem, um, especially moms that work, you know, nine to five or... Yes. Yeah. How do you do that? What is your motivation? Okay. My motivation is the way that it makes me feel. And the, I mean that is emotionally and spiritually and energetically it just if I if I don't exercise I just feel tired and grumpy and ornery and I have a very uh, excitable personality and it kind of helps me burn off some of that energy so it, it's very very important to me and for my mind it relaxes me I get the endorphins it's actually like once you start doing it you get very addicted to it and you get addicted to those those you know those chemicals. The feel-good chemicals. Yes, and I, I love that. And then you just start looking good, and people will say to you, wow, your arms look amazing. And, and I just, it feels so good. And that's what motivates me every morning to get up and go do it, no matter what, because I know that that's going to give me the energy to continue. Now, I don't do it seven days a week. I probably exercise maybe four to 
five days a week, you know, and, and then my husband, uh, Troy Mathern, he's very encouraging to go running. We run with our dogs in these trails in Memorial, and that is very fun, too, that he shares that with me, and we go in the morning and, and run real early in the morning, like 7.20, we'll, we'll go running. How do you do that, though? How do you get up that early? What oh, I love, I love to get up early, and I love my Nespresso coffee machine. Oh, so <laughs> caffeine, but also sleep, right? Sleep is really oh, yeah, important. yeah, I go to bed that's, early. That's something that you've always highlighted ever since I was little. Um, yes. And yesterday when I called you and you said you sound grumpy, I went home at 4 o'clock and slept and slept Good. till 4 o'clock this morning. So yes. um, you're right. How does sleep affect you and affect your, your ability to function every day? Well, I make it a priority. My, my nutrition, my sleep, and my exercise are like that. The, there's no question about that. I mean, I, I have, I'm very rigid, and I'm very rigid with my children, the little ones that are here, because they too need their sleep. And when children start acting bad, or you know, there's behavioral issues and things like that, it's usually because they're either not eating right or they're sleep deprived. And so you have to just slow things down and, and make sure they're getting proper rest. And I mean, not not just six hours. I'm talking eight to ten hours of sleep is so important and, and all the studies show how important it is for your brain it you know it, it lets you get into REM it lets your yeah because that's time for your brain to recover and actually heal and grow yes. and rest yes and then with all the working out that's torn down a lot of muscles that I need the rest to help rebuild so that I can look good you know completely you have a vision board right that you wanted to show us Yes, I have a vision board. This is another thing. I have lots of different uh, books that I've pulled here. And can I also share one other thing so I don't forget? Of course uh, you can. Yeah, about meditation. Oh, yeah. You like to meditate as well. Well, I love to meditate, but I'm not quite disciplined enough yet to say that I'm a pure meditator. But, but let's introduce like meditation for a little bit rather than just okay. jumping into it. What, okay. like explain meditation a little bit, what it is, why it's helpful. Okay, this is kind of a funny story. When I first married your dad, I knew nothing about meditation. And um, he had had colon cancer, and he wanted to, or maybe that was before he had the colon cancer, but he wanted us to go and learn how to meditate. And there was this place called um, Transcendental Meditation. And we went there, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is really weird. And it, it just seemed very weird. And that's why I, I just, but once I got there, they give you this, they give you a mantra that helps you stay. First of all, meditation is breath and it's complete uh, focus on your breath and nothing else. So what you start to do, once you start meditating, you start to notice things and have awareness of your thoughts. And it's called monkey mind. We all have monkey mind and the thoughts that we have are so powerful. And if you can meditate and look at the thoughts, and not have, you know, not judge your thoughts, just say, oh, oh, there I go again, or, oh, that's interesting. Instead of making judgments about your thoughts, it's just or a nice holding way. on to them correctly, correct? It's, yes. it's the idea that you're supposed to let thoughts come in and you're supposed to just let them go and not hold on to them. Yes, and I love, I love doing this, this one meditation where I'm sitting on the side of a, a, a babbling brook and I see a leaf and in my mind, the leaf is the thought, and I watch it, and I watch it, and I watch it go down the babbling brook, and it, then it's gone. Then, then another, another thought will come. So that's and how you kind of picturize meditation as being? Yes. Okay. Yes, just very, um, just, and breathing, and filling the air, like, through, like, sometimes if you're really in a deep meditation, you can actually fill your breath on your mind like entering into your nostrils and it's just an amazing it's like it's like sipping in a, a wonderful aroma I mean breath is just so powerful and most of the time we're all walking around like I'm nervous right now so I can tell my breath is a little fast and I have a little so if you just can breathe it just makes your shoulders go down and then you have awareness about your surroundings and you can feel your heart slow down and I mean, it, and, it, and it's free. Your breath is free. <laughs> and that's just, you know? <laughs> so yeah. you, you like to meditate. And the book you wanted to show yes. us was? 
What book was yes, it? Yes, yes. This is Tibetan sound healing. This this is a, a teacher from, well, this teacher taught this Alejandro, who uh, is the meditation teacher at MD Anderson, which is one of the finest uh, cancer, you know, MD research Anderson centers in the world. Research center. uh -huh. yep. And he actually came and taught us. There's there's so many different ways to meditation to meditate. I mean, some people believe prayer, and some people, you know, use sound healing with the ah oh, oh, oh rama, you know, like that. People even use beads like this. And this, this is also uh, an amazing woman and friend of mine that um, ha actually makes jewelry now. Let me see. I have her book, too. Where is it? It's, um, where did I put that book? <laughs> oh. Why can't. don't you continue and explain to us why you like the meditation book? Okay. Because it, it helps you meditate. Like a lot of people say, well, what do you do? Like I have all these weird thoughts and, and how, do you, how do you begin doing it? And it's very hard for our culture because, well, I think it's very hard for humans. Well, it's Just very hard for the Western no. culture because we're a culture that keeps going and we don't believe in taking breaks and we don't believe in giving ourselves time to relax. We're a culture that believes if we're not doing something, if we're not trying to achieve something, we're doing something wrong, which really is yes. it's the opposite. We need to take care of our bodies and our minds in order to achieve greatness and to keep going and to make those strides. Because um, if not, you'll never get there. You'll tucker out. Yes, yeah. that, that is right. And meditation helps you to just kind of slow down. And, and if you can visualize while you're meditating, that also helps you too because our thoughts, that's why I have my vision board. And actually, you were the first person that gave me a vision board. And now every year I make, here's the first vision board that you gave me. Do you remember this? Yep, I made that vision board for you. Yep, yes. And now every year I get one of those trifold folders and I cut things out or just put neat things that I've seen on that board and and I try to visualize. And just the whole action of cutting it out, not that I'm like going to create that or anything like that. It's just, it just enhances my, my, my world. A vision you know? board in our family, the importance of it is it helps us to see what's in, what, what we want or where we want to go or what's important right. in our life and then we look in magazines or on the computer and then we print them out and the whole action of actually taking the time to be in the moment and decide what's important to you helps you see where you want to go and then you create this beautiful board full, filled with like textures and colors and I mean you can have anything on there you can have like right. carpet and random yeah. bows or pennies or whatever it's it's just so you Fabric. can see you yeah, know, it, you so you can see what's important in your life and where, you know, where where's the next place you want to go. Um, so that's why we do a vision board every year, or at least try to. I have a huge one up in my room that hangs from the ceiling to the floor that I did one year. Um, and it's just, it's be they're beautiful as well. Yeah, they really are. Did you see mine when you were home? Yeah, I saw the one in your, yeah. the new one in your bedroom. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what was the other book you wanted to show us, too? Well, uh, this is, if anybody can go online and find her jewelry, it's Elizabeth Irvine, and this is another good way to meditate. It's a, it's a prayer. They're prayer, prayer beads. beads. Uh-huh, but they're actually pure, pure rocks. Yeah, I mean, not rocks. Well, they're gemstones, and each one of them have a different meaning, um, which is kind of like, ooh, hoo 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 but um, some people believe. What does ooh, hoo 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 mean? You know, ooh, hoo <laughs> You know, like, no, no, you, well, a little out there. Oh, not, okay. Not, but, <laughs> yeah. So, but each, each, uh, each stone has different pressure or vibration or something from the earth that help <laughs> my husband's laughing anyway, that help make it, um, what it, what it is. And then you will be attracted to it. And there's been many books written about, you know, there's uh, actually people that are involved in uh, crystals and healing with rocks right. Because and the, like that. the thing is that we all have different vibrations, right? As yes. humans, we're all made up of atoms. Um, when yes. you really get down to it, so we're we're all vibrating at this energy level. And then the idea is that um, the stones are compressed naturally. Um, right. throughout the years, the and so they're going to have yeah. different vibrations every single stone in order for that stone to be created. 
So the idea is that you're attracted to certain stones because it's going to help you. Well, they're going to it's going to be similar to your vibration pattern. Right. And help you like move through whatever it is that you you need to I mean, you're just attracted to certain things and like attracts like. Right. And so the idea is that with prayer beads, you have a mantra that you say and you go along every single bead. And I think you with hold these, it between your first and your middle finger. Yeah, well, you don't even have to be that specific. You, you just take each bead and with each bead, you take a breath in and then the next one, you can exhale and then inhale, exhale. And it's just focusing your breath on one thing instead of letting your mind, this is a, a way to, you know, to help your mind, channel your mind into just one direction instead of letting the monkey mind thoughts. Because you can't be thinking about what you're going to go grocery shopping for if you're like trying to find the next bead and the next bead, you know? So it's a really neat way to help you concentrate and keep on, you know, with your meditation. And when you meditate, you don't have to meditate for 30 minutes or an hour if you can just this is what i've started doing because i do have such little time in the morning when we we awake at six o'clock the first thing i do is i recognize that i'm that i'm fluttering awake and i can feel breath and i can feel it go through my nostrils and i'll lay there very silently and i'll take a deep inhalation and the deep exhalation and i'll do it again and then by then it's it's time for me to get up. And do you know what? I do it when I go to bed too. So it's not like I, throughout the day I'm really sitting. Sometimes I go and I, I'll meditate with a group of people that I meditate with on Tuesdays. But most of the time it's just that meditation in the morning and that meditation at night. And, and inhale, sometimes and inhalation, exhalation. And with that, we're going to go to a commercial. Inhale and exhale on, on your commercial break because it's very important. Very um, important. We'll be back in a few I'm Miley Scarpino. I'm here with my mom, Janet Mathern, and this is the Empower Hour. See you in a few. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I'm a senator from the Big Island and the ER physician. Every other Tuesday, I get to host a show here on the Think Tech program about healthcare. We call it Healthcare in Hawaii. It's really enjoyable for me to bring other healthcare leaders from around the state to talk about our pressing issues. Hawaii has long been the health state, but we need to keep up the momentum the inertia and with your help and with your participation we can come and share all of the big issues that are pressing day to day thanks for joining us every tuesday alternating weeks from 2 to 2:45. aloha my name is paul jackson better known as pj and my local interest is in sports i have my own sports radio show at kwai am 1080 that you can stream live i also have my own website pjsportsradio.com we have live guests in studio, and we talk about discussions and topics that everyone wants to know locally here on the island. We cover everything from surfing to basketball to whatever's going on locally, sports-wise. We try to do our best and cover the topics in depth as much as we can. Once again, thank you for joining PJ here on Hawaii Sports Update. Mahalo. Welcome back to the Empower Hour, guys. I'm your host, Marley Scarpino. I tend to say the same thing every time we come back. Welcome back to the Empower Hour, guys. Anyways, welcome back. Um, I'm here with my mom, Janet Mathurin, with her headphones on. Look at you, mom. Um, blast off. What? <laughs> blast off. Yeah, you look like you're going to take the NASA excursion <laughs> to Mars. Anyways, um, why don't you tell us about your affirmations? Okay. Huh. Every so often, I create an affirmation that is important to me. I don't even really know what this is, so this is kind of cool. I get to learn about this. Okay, hey. well, affirmations are things that are really, it, it's um, something that you kind of consolidate into like maybe one or two words or even just a sentence that helps you remember and like refocus and regroup to why you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. Okay. So at different, at different times in our life, we have different um, challenges. Like sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's hard. And so I'm going to share this one that really worked, that is my recent one. And I love this. I wait, am wait, wait, still... wait, wait, first, oh. how often do you write a new affirmation? Well, it's kind of funny. It, you, it's not like I sit down and go, okay, I'm going to write a new affirmation. It kind of just sort of disintegrates and then you realize, wow, okay, that is no longer my issue. This is 
this is what I need to focus on. Then you'll create a new one. So you write but new I, affirmations when you feel that your life is in you, a void or you're, you're having trouble or something like that? No, because it, it can be, it, they can, it can also be full of gratitude. You can write, um, you know, gratitude affirmations, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm feeling whole, healthy, and happy. Like someone that's trying to lose weight, you could say something like, um, feeling fine at 109, and then that helps you kind of to remember, oh, that's my affirmation, you know, or that. Okay, that, so, but it, it is still goal-related. It, yes. It's yes. what you need in your life. It's something that you're looking for, trying to fulfill. Yes. Or okay. something that you want to continue on. Like if you have uh, abundance going on in your life, you can say, I have gratitude for the universe and what it's providing for me and what God's bringing into my life or something like that. But here's, here's my latest one. Okay. I, I am to feel good no matter what, no matter who. And I love that because throughout my life, sometimes I have uh, relationship problems. And I, I tend to feel like I, I don't matter or something like that. And being a stay-at-home mom, sometimes I, I feel like I don't matter. And so well, I wait. That's a that's like an important topic. Why don't you feel like you matter as a well, stay-at-home mom? Um, because our society doesn't really acknowledge stay-at-home moms, even though they're the most important backbone of the home. And how can how can you uh, go out into the world and have you know, anything if you don't have a stay-home mom or someone that's not necessarily stay-home mom, but it helps a lot. And, and, and I have lots of girlfriends that choose to work, and they're very stressed. And, and the children, you, you can tell the children are stressed. And either they have help or they, they have family that can come and help too, because not everybody can just stay home. But, you know, it's a choice. We all make choices. So... I mean, I could go in and work too, but right now I, I find that it's very valuable to me to be with these children. Because, like, look at you. You're already all grown up, you know? Yep. And it goes by so fast. And I think that it was important to you when you were little that I was there. And, and that you and made it, me my peanut butter jelly sandwiches and cut them out with the heart-shaped cutters. And then I would get yes. a note in my lunchbox every day. Yeah, I mean, those things really do stick with you, and they make you feel validated, and they make you feel special. And then when you grow up and you don't get that anymore, you're kind of like, oh, that, this sucks. I have to make my own lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't get a heart-shaped peanut butter sandwich. But, um, yeah, I think I completely agree with you. I well, think you know what? Here's you a new affirmation. Okay. I am I am allowing for accelerated abundance. I'm allowing for, is it, is it accelerated? Uh huh. Accelerated abundance. Accelerated or accelerated? Accelerated. Accelerated. Like uh huh. Accelerated. Okay. Like fast. Like okay. It's coming fast to you, and that means you're gonna get your peanut butter sandwich. Oh, okay. Thanks, mom. So your affirmation. Continue with that. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just thought it was really important to talk about moms because you're right. Moms do so much in the community and society. They help basically make the world what it is because um, they're producing children and then raising them and I don't think moms get enough credit so thank you moms out there we value you yeah I value you yay. yay yay moms and and thank you to my my girlfriends that are, you know are attorneys for big oil companies and things like that I they're amazing I just am in awe of what they do and and they're also amazing being able to juggle children and work yes. I know one of yes, my they're, professors they're, they're told me organized. the other day Dr. Anderson he's like you should definitely have children Miley I was like I don't I can't juggle children and going to work. He's like, I'm sure you can, you can do it. I was like, oh, no. You could. Oh, you God. could. No, I don't think so. Um, affirmation. Sorry, we keep getting off topic. So your current affirmation. Yeah, that was it. To feel good no matter what, no matter who. You know, so like sometimes I, and it's not that other people make me feel like I don't matter. It's the thoughts that my monkey mind produces. It says, oh, you don't matter because you're not making a paycheck. Your time is not as as valuable and sometimes I find myself feeling like I have to go volunteer at the school or do something because I'm staying home you know and so I do matter my time does matter just as much as someone that 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 is working because I really am like working hard and and I've had all kinds of jobs as you know and it is it is the hardest job because you you don't really get a paycheck but 
you know, my husband appreciates you don't, me. You don't get an eval and you don't have a boss telling you, wow, you're doing good or this is what you I need know. to fix or you really have no guidance. You just kind of have to do it on your own and hope that you're I doing know. it right and believe in yourself and yeah, it's hard. Yes, it is hard and, and you don't get a, you know, you don't get a big, you know, a big, I don't know, a big profit. Like you don't, what is that called when you get a, you know, I can't think of the word, you know. Uh, see, that's what happens to you, too. Um, when you get old, you, you forget things? No, I'm not old. No, that happens when you're young, too. <laughs> I just have a lot on my mind, and I only can remember certain things. The monkey mind. Important. Yes, the monkey mind. But you're, I understand what you mean. You don't get a, you kind of don't get a large profit. Your children leave the nest, and you're uh -huh. left with something you put all your time into, and it's gone at the end of the day. Well, eventually. But you know what? It's by far the most joyful thing. I find joy in it. Even though they yell at me and don't like me sometimes or whatever, it's, I get great satisfaction of it because I've gotten to the point where I know what I'm doing, and I have confidence in that, that what I'm doing is going to produce good humans here on Earth, which we need, you know? Which we need. We do need we, that. Yes. Um, so we have about four minutes left. Is there and any the whole thing? Yeah. What else would you like oh. to share? Are there certain things? Because I, I oh yeah. How about one of my recipes? Does anybody want to write this recipe down? That's what we wanted. Yeah, I wanted you to share a recipe. We talked about that the other day. Because you have okay. a great pancake recipe, but it's a healthy pancake recipe. Mom, yes. That's something that mom does. Is she cook? You cook amazing things. Um, yes. but everything, it's like with lean ground turkey or you, you so substitute, yes. right, you substitute things out and you make them as wholesome as possible. Yes, I do. And, and my husband loves me for that. He's like, oh, thank you so much for making us so healthy. And my girls are so healthy too. So I'm going to share this egg white, uh, pancake with you. And all it, it, all that it consists of is four egg whites, a half a cup of uncooked oatmeal. And don't get the quick oat milk, just get the regular old oat milk. Regular and, oat. Yep. And three tablespoons of low sugar preservatives, either strawberry, cherry, blueberry. What, the one that I love is apricot. And, and then Strawberry's I put, and really then, good too. Yeah, but I love, uh, apricot's my favorite. And then I put a, um, a little dash of uh, cinnamon. And then you mix all the ing ingredients together. You just put that all in a blender, brrr, blend it all up. And then you preheat a medium-sized Teflon pan with a Pam spray. You put the Pam spray, you know, on your over medium heat, or and you some pour coconut the coconut oil or anything, just yeah, a little or bit. Yeah, coconut oil. Uh -huh. and then, gonna, yeah. Uh huh. And then you can pour the mixture into the pan, and you cover it, and you cook it for four, four or five minutes. So when she and says you cover it, you use a pan cover. Lid. Uh -huh. Or a lid. I just use a lid because I I do it on a flat. Or you uh, can use a plate too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's kind of hard to get off. Don't don't okay. use a plate. Okay, sorry. Just use, the, just use the lid, like one of those big lids off the top of one of your pans. Okay. And, and it will kind of fluff up, and it gets all kind of fluffy. And then you turn it over just like a pancake. And then you know what you can do? It's like a cake. It's like a pancake. Then you can make four or five. Like, I doubled the recipe, so I'd use eight egg whites and one cup of, of oatmeal. And then what you can do, you can also add a banana in there to make it like a banana pancake. You can add strawberries, you know, fresh strawberries or fresh, kind of like a rotten banana that has spots on it. Let it get kind of all spotty. It's not rotten. And it's good when it's brown because that means that it has its fructose and it's easily digested. Yeah. Well, not rotten, but some people think that's rotten. I know. But okay. Anyway, and then you blend it all up. And you know what I do? I put those in the fridge. And so then you have your breakfast for the next two or three days and you just pull it out. You put some almond butter on it. Put pot, you know, pop it in the microwave, take it out, put almond butter on it, and slices of uh, fresh banana and strawberries. Oh my gosh, it is so delicious. And yogurt, you can put like, um, you know, Greek yogurt on the top, and it's just amazing. And it's got your protein, it's got some fiber, it's got everything that you it's need, got some and it will help you good go carbos. on. Good carbos. Yeah, yeah, it will be very sustainable for you for the day, for your morning. Yeah, and also you can just. If you need a, a snack throughout the day, you can take the pancake, uh, put your almond butter, you know, slather a thin layer, and then roll a uh, banana inside, so it's like a hot dog, and put it in a Ziploc bag, and then later on, you have this incredible treat. Well, awesome, Mom. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. We're coming to a close. Um, oh, darn. Yeah, we are. Do you want to end, I, do you wanna end I, with anything? Yeah, yeah, can I just read this? Is there time for me to read this special thing? Yeah. 
Okay, I have come to the frightening conclusion that I am the decisive element. It is my personal approach that uh, creates the climate. It is my daily mood that makes the weather. I possess tremendous power to make life miserable or joyous. I can be a tool of torture or I can be an instrument of inspiration. I can humiliate or humor, hurt or heal. In all situations, it is my response that oh, decides whether a crisis is escalated or de-escalated and a person hu humanized or dehumanized. If we treat people as they are, we make them worse. But if we treat people as they ought to be, we help them become what they are capable of becoming. And that's Johann Wolfgang von Goth. And I love that. I love that too, because it's all about empowering people and being the best you you can be. That's right. Thank you for sharing that with us. You're welcome. That's a perfect quote for the close. Okay. Well, thanks for being on, Mom. I love thanks. you. I really appreciate you taking the time. I love you. Okay. That's it, guys, for today. This was the Empower Hour, Motherly Love. Um, I'm your host, Miley Scarpino, and I was here with my mom, Janet Mathern. Have a good weekend. I will see you next week. Aloha.